Father, you are our only focus. Yes. This is your service. We are your people. Yes. This is your property and your house. Yes. And we yes. give you glory. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And we give ourselves to you. Have your way in me. Is that your prayer today? Yes. Have your way in me. Worship us, Sister Diane and Sister Amber as they come. Bless them. Praise the Lord. You can stay standing if you'd like. Um, I was I was praying um, out on the road the other day, and the Lord just impressed me. I bought a new song to sing, and the Lord, but the Lord impressed me as I was traveling that this was the song that we were supposed to do. All right. So I I trust Him in that. Amen. And Amen. you know, I just encourage you. Melissa started us off with a great way to praise the Lord, and that's what this song is talking about, praise His name. We're in some difficult times right now, but I'll tell you what, like we talked about in prayer time, if we will remember who we're serving yes, and praise His name, He's got it all under control. Yes, He does. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah.
It's not a random spirit. It's not just a feeling. But the Holy Ghost is in this house. And I believe he's got us here to teach us, transform us, whatever we need to touch us. And I believe today he's going to do that. There are some of you that are facing trials. Some of you are facing sickness. Some of you are facing surgeries. We have people that have family members. We have family members of this church that are uh, struggling with COVID-19 and different, different ones. Don't let that put fear in your heart. Just let this know that God is in control. And just praise that fear away. Yeah. Amen. I've been praying and seeking God for a word. In a few minutes, we're going to share the word. Part of the message, I included a reference to a song that Sister Melissa sings called No, Not One. And I started to call her, and the Lord said, Try me. <laughs> and I said, Lord, if, it, if it's your will, the confirmation I need this morning was for her to sing that song. No talk, no discussion, no talk. How many of you know that God's on the throne? Yes, he is. He, he, is. he knows what we need. He, is. he knows yes, what we he need. Here, what a joy it is to have Pastor Gary Heyman with us. He's, he's my pastor, and he's a part of this family. Amen. And he's going to be playing for us this morning. I'd like for our ushers to come and give you an opportunity to give, to tithe, and you do that so faithfully. And God bless you for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard an old, old story how a Savior came from glory. I mean, you believe there's victory in Jesus. Amen. It's, just, Amen. it's just bubbling in me today. If you need encouragement, you're in the right place. Yes. Amen. If you need for your faith to be stirred, you're in the right place. Father, we pray your blessing upon this offering and the church said. Amen. 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 Amen.
Can you imagine 144,000 people going to hell every day? And then I found out 20,000 or less of those people are going to heaven every day. Ever since I was a kid, it's always been my desire to live for God yes. one of these days to make it to heaven. Amen. And that's still my desire.
I believe Jesus was a good rabbi. I believe Jesus was a prophet, but he was not God. Well, there's a problem with that because Jesus claimed to be God. So if he's not God, then he's either crazy or a liar. Amen? And so they want to tell us that he was a good man, good this, good that, but he's not God. You're just now telling me that a crazy man is a good teacher and a good rabbi. You're saying, in saying that, people are saying that this man who lied was a good leader and there are those who follow him. It doesn't add up, folks. He, he, he claimed to be God. How many of you know that he is? Yes. He is a rewarder of those that diligently Amen. seek him. You must come to him believe that he is. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh to the Father but by me. Amen. You say, well, Pastor, that's not popular. Well, God didn't call us to be popular. Right. He called us to be biblical. Right. To be correct. I want to talk to you this morning. That, that didn't cost you anything extra. That was just a little extra. I want to talk to you this morning uh, about fear. And uh, I am calling this message Fear Not. The message in the title is Fear Not. And the title in the message is Fear Not. <laughs> we must know how to deal with fear. So I am going to shares the Lord has given me today this message and each of us must decide today how we're going to deal with fear. I believe you're going to hear the rainbow word. I believe you're going to hear the prophetic in a moment. I believe you're going to understand that this is not pastor getting up preaching a sermon, but this is the Holy Spirit speaking through him that we might understand how we're going to how we are going from this day forward, can't change yesterday, but tomorrow, how we're going to deal and contend with fear. Because I'm going to tell you, you look out in the world across the globe, you look at the you look at the events of the day. Listen, listen to me. We haven't seen anything yet. Pastor, if it gets any worse, oh, it's going to get worse. The question is, how are you? And how am I going to respond? How am I going to deal? And fear has everything to do with this. So let's dive into the Word of God. That's where the answers are. In the book of Isaiah, if you have your Bibles, I'd like you to turn with me to Isaiah, as one of my friends says, to the book of Isaiah. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 1. says, but now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, I could preach there a while, O Israel, I created you, Jacob, I formed you, Israel. He said, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name, and you are mine. How many would just say with me, I'm his? Yes. He is mine. He is mine. I want to talk about fear and I want to talk about the commandment that is in the scriptures concerning fear for us to fear not. Now there's a song and I've heard preachers say and I've heard teachers say that there's 365 fear nots in the Bible. I can't find a version where that's true. Uh, not even close. So I have no idea where that comes from, but that's okay. Everybody say that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. It only matters, hey folks, if it just says it one time, right. then that's all right. Man. I will tell you this, that from Genesis to Revelation, one of the basic concepts, one of the basic foundational truths of Scripture is concerning fear and how we are made overcomers of fear. And so today, for the next few minutes, I would like for us to 
take a good look at it and to focus upon it and to be doers of the word, not just hearers only. You ever thought about that verse? We, we, we want to be doers, but, but, but to be a doer, you must first be a hearer. So I've asked the Lord to give us ears to hear and heart to receive. Philippians 4 and 6 says this, be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Very quickly, I want to tell a story. I tell basically every time I refer to this scripture, and I feel like that I had no choice. When, when I was 18 years old, my 17-year-old brother drowned. I was just, it was before I was married, I was living in a small home and renting a small house. I went out to the mailbox and my brother had been gone about two weeks. And a young girl that I went to school with in, uh, in Iowa when I was there in high school, uh, she had written me a letter. I didn't know her very well, found it kind of interesting that she would write me a letter. Opened it up and it had just a little note with a little greeting and it said, and she wrote down Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. And when I got to that, I got to that part where he said, uh, The peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Now I'm going to tell you, you might be here today, you might not understand the significance of that verse. But the enemy is always trying to destroy you and I spiritually, and he's always trying to affect us mentally. Amen. Yes. I'm telling you, he's out to kill, steal, and destroy. And he's always trying to trip us up in any way that he can. And I appreciate how the peace of God guards me mentally. Yes. Guards my mind and guards my heart. And I, I, I speak and pray and declare that blessing and that protection over you today. But I want us to talk about what is fear? First of all, I want to take care of a real important part of this teaching, and that is to understand that there are different kinds of fear. And the fear of God that we read about in the Scripture is a different kind of fear. You've got to establish this in your mind and understand that the fear of God refers to fear. It refers to a sense of respect, a sense of awe, a sense of reverence or revere or submission to God. When we think about the fear of God, we hear Deuteronomy 6 and 24 where he said, The Lord commanded uh, us to observe all these statutes, statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. You want to be preserved? Then walk in the fear of God. Yeah. Psalms 31, 19. Oh, how great is your goodness which you have laid up for those who fear you. Right. Psalms 112. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord. Who delights greatly in his commandments. Psalms 115. He will bless those who fear him. Who fear the Lord both small and great. There's all kind of unbelievable uh, I'm talking about pushed down, stacked up, running over kind of blessings. Yes. If you and I will just learn to walk in the fear of God. But this morning I'm not preaching about the fear of God. We need to walk in the fear of God. There's other scriptures, but for the sake of time, I'm going to go on. I want to talk about the fear that he's talking about when he says fear not. I want us to break any cycle of fear this morning. We need to rebuke any instance of fear in our lives. We need to totally eliminate any spirit of fear. We need to cast out any demon of fear in Jesus' name. Pastor, I don't know about that. I, I, somebody might say, I come to church so you can cast the spirit of fear out of me. Well, first of all, I want to tell you, I will not hesitate, but I will tell you that you can cast the spirit of fear out of your own self. There is not room, there is not wisdom, we cannot facilitate both the spirit of fear and the fear of God simultaneously. 
We're not just talking about one kind of fear that sits over here, the fear of God and it's good, and another kind of fear that sits over here, the fear, uh, the, the unhealthy fear, we're going to call it, sits over here and it's not good and we're just going to walk through life struggling with those. No, they cannot exist simultaneously in our lives. This is an important lesson for us to learn today. We must walk in the fear of God where there is no place for unhealthy fear. All right. God. It's either the fear of God or fear that is unwelcome and unhealthy. Pastor, what are you talking about? Well, Matthew 6, 24 says no one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in them. And we're going to talk about this in just a few moments a little more. The commandment is to fear not. The conflict many individuals have is trying to accommodate both. We are going to break the cycle of fear that has gripped many hearts and paralyzed many believers. I believe that we're going to do that this morning. We're going to break the cycle. He says, be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself. Many are paralyzed spiritually. There are people that are here today you are paralyzed spiritually. You're frozen in fear. And we're going to break that cycle in Jesus' name. Amen. I look, and, and I won't spend a lot of time here, but let's look at the intellectual, at the psychological, and maybe even the scientific description of fear. Fear is an emotion. Fear is one of the many emotions that human beings share. I don't want anybody to feel condemnation this morning for having healthy fear. I do pray that we all feel conviction for allowing unhealthy fear to reside in our lives. Paul Ekman, Dr. Paul Ekman defines uh, an emotion as a process, a particular kind of automatic appraisal influenced by our personal past in which we sense something important to our welfare as a current. I know it's a long definition, but in, in short, we can say this, that it is, an, um, it is a process of emotions. As our emotions appraise the situation, then we have a, a, a different, as, our, as, our, as we uh, appraise the situation, then we have different emotions that come on us. And they happen within us. And scientifically, I'm going to say this, they, they happen separate from your intellectual thought process. You can be thinking one thing in your body and experiencing fear. You can be thinking one thing, but yet you can experience another emotion. And I just kind of lay that foundation because it's going to help you to understand. The enemy is always trying to get inside your mind. He's always trying to manipulate your mind. He's always trying to manipulate your emotions. He wants to influence those things and he wants to bring that spirit of fear into your life so that it will hinder you so that you will not fulfill God's purpose in your life. Hebrews 4 and 15, but we do not have a high priest that cannot sympathize with our weakness. But was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Yes, yeah, Sister Butler sings a song that says, no, not one. I'm telling you, Jesus is the answer. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No one can do what he can do. Jesus is your answer. To eliminate fear in your life. You know what I'm afraid? And this is the prophetic word that God put in my heart. That this is what I am concerned about. Is that we are learning as Christians. As Christ followers. We are learning to facilitate the very thing. That we need to eliminate. We need to eliminate fear in our lives. Because the truth is it's either faith. Or fear. It's time for us to eliminate fear. I was in Israel two years ago and I was sitting on the Sea of Galilee and I was in a boat with some other preachers and pastors and 
and leaders, and we were sitting there, and I've never seen a more peaceful place. We sat there, and all of a sudden, we were just each having their own time with the Lord. I'm sitting, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And he said, I brought you here to deliver you from fear. It's a powerful, powerful moment in my life when the Lord eliminated certain fears and unhealthy fears in my life. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. There's no excuse for us walking in fear. That's what, that's what hinders the move of God and the work of God. That's what hinders the church in these last days. If you put the wrong thing in, you'll get the wrong thing out. We feed our fears. Yes. Yes. We feed our fears. You know, if there's anything I've learned since the struggle that I have had with type 2 diabetes. You know the sad thing and the good thing about type 2 diabetes? Everybody, if you hear type 2 diabetes, I want you to hear. You know the good thing about type 2 diabetes is that there's a cure. See, a lot of sicknesses, there's no cure. Did you know if you're here, you've got type 2 diabetes, you know you can get rid of it in the next four weeks? Your A1C can come down. You can get rock or get down here and get your sugar. You know what? You, you just got to eat the right things. Amen. You know what? I'm learning to eat raw spinach. Can y'all believe that? I'm learning to eat raw greens. They come from the store, a little plastic thing. And, and I've learned that they're good. I just kind of fork them up and shove them in my mouth and, 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 and get onions and, and, and all kind of kale and and all of this stuff, it's good for you. And this is the same way with fear. You can get rid of fear. Somebody, I'm about to shout in this place. You can get rid of fear. But you know what? You've made a decision to live with it. Some people made a decision they're going to walk in fear because mama did, because daddy did, because I'm more comfortable. It's not worth the fight. Oh, yes, it is. You and I can get rid and eliminate unhealthy fear in our lives. And then and only then can we walk in faith. You see, we've got to talk about this because we love to preach about faith, Pastor. We love to sing about faith. We love to study about faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. By faith they did this. By faith they did that. And we get excited and we want to talk about faith. But you know what? We've got to talk about fear before we can talk about faith. Because faith and fear cannot coexist. That's why in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, he said, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. That's not a translation mistake. That's exactly what he meant. It's exactly what the Holy Spirit was saying. I mean, he said, God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. By the way, I'm going to finish this verse, but I can't. And I'm telling you, the Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from above. Comes from God. God's got a good, good gift for you today. Yes. That it's not fear. Right. It's not that spirit of fear. Yes. I did not give you a spirit of fear, he said, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. If we allow fear to remain active in our lives, it will take hold of our thoughts. It will paralyze our forward momentum. It will suffocate your God-given destiny. It's very probable and it's definite for some today that fear is the very thing that is defeating you. You're blaming somebody and you're blaming this and you're blaming that. And I hear the word say, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The problem isn't your husband or your ex. The problem isn't even your pastor or the one sitting down. But no, the problem is not your neighbor. The problem is the fear that lives in your house, not near your house. Woo, that's good preaching. Yes, sir. All right. Through Christ, God has given us the power to overcome every obstacle. Every obstacle the enemy attempts to set in our way, no matter what the circumstance. 
God has given us power to break the spirit of fear from off our lives and the strength to fight against and be victorious over the tactics of the enemy because he will come back over and over again trying to put fear in your lives. Has the enemy tried to put fear in my life since I was out on the Sea of Galilee in Israel last year? You better believe it. But I have learned what it is to live without an unhealthy, debilitating fear. I'm telling you, fear fuels depression. Fuel fears panic. Fear fuels anxiety. Fear will make you literally and physically sick. Fear will kill you if you continue to allow it to live in your life. It didn't come from God. And he said in Galatians 5 and 1, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. When you're in Christ, it's your choice to surrender to the bondage and the stronghold of fear. This is a hard, this is a hard word. This is a hard word I'm not sure. Because we want to, we want to be able to call the pastor or call friends and say, y'all pray for me because the enemy has come against me. And if we really get right down to the brass tacks in this, this is what the enemy does. He attacks you and I with fear. Amen. And we want to be able to excuse it and say, y'all pray for me. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be straight with you. What you need to do is rebuke it oh, in Jesus' name. Amen. You have the authority Amen. in Jesus' name. If you understood the authority that you have in Jesus' name, you would rebuke it until it leaves. Listen, you might not have time to call the pastor. You call me, I, you call me day or night. But that's, that's not the point. The point is, is when you feel or sense that fear coming against you, stop right where you're at and say, I will not have this in the name of Jesus. I will not allow this in my life. I will not fear the virus. I will not fear the pandemic. I will not fear getting old. Boy, I'm, yeah, I'm stepping on some toes right now. All kinds of unhealthy fears. We need to stand fast. When you're in Christ, you're given the keys and the authority to overcome the enemy in every area of your life. I've been listening to some great teaching by, by Ken Hagen, Sr., Papa Hagen. And you might be saying, well, I don't. Listen, shake that stuff off. You know what? When somebody teaches something that I don't believe, I just don't swallow it. No big deal. It's really no big deal to me. We have, we have people preaching in our church that we don't believe everything they do. And when preachers say something and we don't believe it, you know what we do? We close the book, throw it on the shelf and say, I'm not going to have anything to do with Kenneth Hagin. Honey, you're going to miss out. I don't agree with everything and some people don't like it because I call names. Well, we might as well call names. I don't agree with everything a lot of preachers say. But I've been listening and he's been teaching me. The Holy Spirit's been using him to be with the Lord for a few years. But I've been listening to that, and I am reminded that I have the authority in the name of Jesus. If we could get our head wrapped around the fact that we have the authority when we come in the name of Jesus. When you declare, listen, it's not just when you say it, you got to believe it. It's not just when you say it, or even if you believe it to a degree, you've got to understand. You've got to understand what has to happen to the enemy. You listen to him, you spirit of fear. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Remember what that demon said? He said, oh, he, he, him I know. And him I know, but him I know. Listen, they know the name of Jesus. Those demons, they know that that spirit of fear, he knows the name of Jesus. Isaiah 10 and 27, And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder. His yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Fear will wrap itself around your destiny. Choking the very life 
out of your dreams and out of your plans. One of the saddest things that I've come to understand is that the church has lost the victory. Many people in the church no longer have dreams, no longer have visions of their calling, and no longer have big ideas about what they can do for God. Many of that, much of that has been stolen from the church. Amen. Right. I was driving past a big crop one day this week. I saw a big field, and it wasn't around here, but I saw a big field of of, of corn, and I noticed how the floodwaters have destroyed. It's dried up now, but floodwaters have destroyed several acres of a beautiful crop. And the Holy Spirit began to deal with me, and I realized as a pastor that, Brother Edward, many of our many of the fruit of this ministry and the fruit of this of this crop are never realized because people are in bondage to fear. What I want to say to you today is, number one, what are you afraid of? And number two, it really doesn't matter. You need to quit focusing on what you're afraid of. And you need, you, you need to rebuke it in Jesus' name. You have the authority. And he said in Mark 2 and 22, No man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine doth burst the bottles, and the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be marked. But new wine must be kept in new bottles. And say, Pastor, what has that got to do with fear? Because this is what we do. We get a revelation from God. This is some rhyming you need to listen. We get a revelation from God. We get a direction from God. The Lord speaks to us. And you know what we do? We stick it down in an old bottle. Well. It's fresh and it's new. God's ready to do a work in you and through you. And we stick it down in an old bottle because of our fears. You know, we're afraid of what somebody might say if I prophesy. We're afraid of what somebody might, might say if I walk in the Spirit and do what God. It will, Pastor, if you just knew what God told me to do, you wouldn't let me do it. You're wrong. I'm here to tell you, don't stick it down in an old bottle where it'll die. If God's given you revelation, if God's given you inspiration, if God's put a call on your life. Somebody said, well, God's called me to start a church. That's wonderful. Play a church. We take our old wine skins. I might as well go ahead and tell you, there's a couple of churches that are being planted in this city. I've had a couple of people ask me, say, well, what are your feelings about that? I say, praise God. Somebody's obeying the Lord. Somebody is hearing the word of God. And if they're not, that's just between them and God. I'm here to tell you, this is not competition. We're not in some kind of human race. I'm not going to live in that old wine skin. I'm going to live in a new wine skin. I'm going to bless them in Jesus' name. I'm going to bless Randall Beagles and Grace Place. I'm going to Randall a bless that's coming to Fort Payne and anybody else that wants to walk in the Spirit. Amen. Now when you get rid of that old wine skin, you're going to enjoy life a little more. What are you afraid of? Right. Well, they might get more people than we get. <laughs> Honey, that's what we're all trying to do. Pastor, they might get some of our people. Well, that's okay because if they get some of ours, God will send us a whole bunch more. Right. This is not a race. This is about people finding the will of God. What, what is the fear that's keeping you from, from going forward? You know what they say the biggest fear is the fear of public speaking. Amen. What are you afraid of? If God's called you to preach, I've, I've dealt with this a lot in nearly 40 years of ministry. People want to, they feel called to preach, and that's hard to believe I've been in ministry that long. <laughs> <laughs> People want to preach and they come and they, they just, you know, yet yeah, Pastor Haney knows exactly what I'm talking about. You know, they, they had enough preach, they just get started. They want, yeah, can I preach Sunday morning? No. We don't let them, I don't know why you don't let me preach. I'm telling you, I got no, well, I'm sure you're called, but if, if God calls you to preach, Let's see if you really believe it. Let's see if you really trust it. You know what I tell people? Back in the day, I tell them to get a cassette tape. Most of y'all don't know what cassette tapes are about. But back, back now, I just tell you, go online. Get on Facebook. 
Get on YouTube. Go to Chattanooga and stand on the street corner. Better yet, go to Fort Payne and stand on the street corner. And if you're willing to do those things, God will bless you with great opportunities to preach and fulfill the call of God in your life. But you know what I have found? Everybody is not called to preach. Can I go ahead and say it like it is? Everybody who preaches is not called to preach. Some folks misunderstood God. But I'm here to tell you if you'll pray and seek God, He'll give you your direction and your assignment and your appointment. And that God forbid that you allow fear to steal that from you. Overcome fear. It starts with conversation. Somebody just needs to go to Walmart today and find somebody and tell them about Jesus. If you can overcome that fear, then you can overcome the next fear and the next fear. But I refuse to live in fear. Somebody say that with me. I refuse to live in fear. There's two. He's done too much for me. Yes, Again, Matthew 6, 24, no man can serve two masters. There's nothing wrong with money. Money's a tool. But money is not God. When you choose to idolize money and exalt it in your heart to a godlike status, then you're choosing to worship money over surrendering to the true and to the living God. When you're practicing idolatry, then it will automatically open the door for fear to come in your life. A double-minded man, James 1 and 8, is, is unstable in all his ways. Romans 8 and 7, because the carnal mind is enmity with God, for it is not subject to the law, neither indeed can be. Listen, fear is carnal. Everybody say it with me. I'm trying to get us back on track. Fear is carnal. See, your flesh wants to fight God while your spirit wants to surrender to Him. It's up to you to put your flesh under subjection and align it with the Word of God. There you go. I said it's up to you. Everybody said it's up to me. It's up to me. That's what fasting is about. Fasting is about putting your, sub, your, your flesh under subjection. You say, well, Pastor, when, when you fast, does the hunger get easier? No. <laughs> Not immediately. When you fast, you have to make your flesh the subject. You have to resist when your mouth is salivating. I heard Jensen Franklin say one time that he woke up chewing on his pillow and said he was in his dream he was eating pizza. <laughs> no, you, you got it. You, you don't jump up and run to the refrigerator. The flesh is, has the flesh has to learn. That the spirit man is in control. And when the spirit man understands, I mean the flesh understands the spirit man's in control, then and only then can you overcome the carna the carnality of fear or the carnality that is in your mind. We all have to overcome the carnality that is in our mind. When, when you and I are walking in the spirit, we turn some things off when they come on the TV. Just turn it off. It's not complicated. It's not rocket science. There's a lot of newscasts that we don't need to watch. There's a lot of media, social media. I'm just here to tell you, what you put in doesn't work and it comes out. Don't you feed that fear. I told somebody this a couple weeks ago, talking with a young man, I said, I said, quit feeding the dog. As long as you feed the dog, he's going to bark. Somebody says, well, if you don't feed the dog, then that's cruel. Well, if your dog is a demon, if your dog is a demon, it's not cruel to kill it. It's cruel to let it live. The spirit of fear is a demon. The spirit of fear is destroying your health. It's destroying, it's destroying your joy. And it's, you know what, it'll be to have you looking at everybody else. Put your eyes off other people. 
Get rid of that spirit of fear. Let's just talk plain as we close today. Pastor, are you not afraid of COVID-19? Now listen closely. I'm here today talking about unhealthy fears. There is such a thing as a healthy fear. Now we get down to the brass tacks here. Somebody, somebody's going to disagree with you preaching however you want to when you're preaching. <laughs> when I walked next to a cliff, I took my kids when they were little over to Gorham's Bluff. Edward's mother. Edward and his family got some property over there. And you go to Gorham's Bluff and you walk out the back side of that building. I had a wedding. I performed a wedding over there. And I walked out the back side of that, that hotel or bed and breakfast, whatever it is. And I, and I walked from me to Miss Emily there. And I back out about where Miss Emily was. And I looked down and there was a, at least 120 feet. There was at least 120 feet to the top of the oak trees. My knees got weak and I backed up. Yeah. That's a healthy fear. Yes. See? Yeah. I mean, we got folks dancing around the cliff saying, God, I take away my fear. You've been foolish now. It's like having that snake. Now, you might experience the mercy of God, but I've seen some folks fall off the cliff. I've seen some people get hurt because they were acting foolish. I'm not talking about healthy fear. I'm here preaching today about unhealthy fear. Healthy fear will keep you away from the cliff. Healthy fear will cause you. Listen, there's nothing wrong with taking precautions. Contrary to some belief, there's nothing wrong with wearing a mask. Because a mask is not just about you, it's about others. It's not just about others breathing on you. It's about you breathing on others. No, I'm not afraid of death. Now I'm not too, I'm not, I'm not too keen on pain. I know I've said that before, and I've said it before because it's still true. I'm just here to tell you, death doesn't scare me. Laying in a bed, coughing, trying to find air. Yeah, that, that concerns me. But listen, okay, it scares me. <laughs> but listen, it's not a fear that I cannot overcome. That's right. That's right. What I'm talking about this morning is when that fear comes, you rebuke it, you resist it in Jesus' name, and faith can move in. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm going to give you the cure for all your fears today. It's right here. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, thank you. Hallelujah. Yes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Pastor, I've been reading. And I've been threatened, but faith is not coming because fear is in its way. Right. Rebuke that fear. You pray in the faith, believing that God is moving, and get rid of the fear in your life. And I'll tell you what will happen faith will come. I'm going to tell you what happens when I read this book. I get peace. Yes. Yes. Doctors prescribe tranquilizers by the millions in this nation. I worked with hospice for one year as a chaplain. Every Wednesday morning we had staff meeting and I sat around a room with doctors and nurses. The doctor said something one day and I just said, well, here's my chance, I wanna know. I said, doctor, tell me about this Xanax. I know it's a tranquilizer and it makes Tranquil, and I said, I know people, and I've dealt with people who were addicted to it. And I'm going to tell you what it does. It numbs you. This is not what the doctor said. I'm, I'm saying it numbs you. It is not the answer. Now, there might be a time when I'm very hesitant to tell you not to go by a doctor's orders because there might be a time where you and I have to 
take medication to get where we need to be. That's between you and God. This doctor turned to me and he said, Pastor, let me tell you what Xanax does. He said, scientifically and medically, Xanax does the same thing as whiskey. Transitional period of time. I just come to the Fort Payne Church of God. I had experienced something similar to this in 2001, but in 2005 when I came here, I'm telling you the en the enemy hit me head on, and I found myself buckling under fear. What have I done? What are we going to do? I've made a mistake. The fear of failure. A combination of fears. And I had somewhat of a, of a breakdown. I went to my office one day and I called. I called Dr. Cohen. One of our guys in Cleveland ran ministerial care. He's a counselor for pastors. I know him. I told him the situation. And he gave me the most unusual advice. It was the farthest thing that I expected from him. He said, Ryan, whatever you do, don't try to know the pain. Just face it. Dig deep. Depend on the Lord. I'm telling somebody here today. Let's get rid of the fear. Don't try to know the fear. Don't try to pretend that it's not there. Right. You're not going to need the pretend fear in the days to come. You're going to need, you're going to need faith. Right. I said you're not going to need some kind of make-believe faith. You're going to need the real deal. Right. And the way you do that is to get rid of the fear now. I will not walk in fear. God has promised me eternal life and abundant life. I'm not, my home is in heaven. My name's written down in the lamps from the light. I have nothing to be afraid of. Stand with me if you would. Somebody here today, the Lord says, you're struggling with the fear of bankruptcy. Somebody's struggling with the fear of bankruptcy. First of all, let me tell you, things aren't usually as bad as they seem. Secondly, I want to tell you, there's life after bankruptcy. Again, I want to tell you this. God can help you to avoid bankruptcy. Pastor, I'm afraid I'm going to get cancer. Don't you do that? And don't you say that. I said stop saying that. Stop I tell you, you and I need to rebuke that spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. I know how it starts in on you. Every little pain. Oh, I think it's a tumor. <laughs> you know what we need to start saying? I believe in this. I believe we need to talk right. You don't have to agree with me. I'm telling you, the word tells us we need to talk right, think right, act right. I started doing this. When I have pain or I have a discomfort, I just say to myself, the Holy Ghost is fast. He's already down there working on that. That's the Lord working on me. And if that don't get rid of the fear, I raise my hand. And I say, praise be unto God. He's the author and the finisher of my faith. I say, God, you are Lord, you're my healer, and I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me. If that don't work, sometimes I just have to go to the prayer room, and I have to get down to business, and I have to say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And then I get a hold of the word, and I start reading the word, and the word brings peace, and pretty soon you look around and fear is nowhere to die. One, one thing I want to share before we go. It, it's, it's
It's important that you understand. It's good that you came to church this morning. It's good that the pastor rebuked fear over your life. Now you're going to go home. Now what are you going to do about it? Well, Pastor, I'm going to try to hang on to that word you gave me until next Sunday. You won't make it. I wish some of you would start right now. Raise your hands and speak into the spirit realm and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I come against fear. Yes. Right where you are, you just begin to pray. I come against fear and anxiety in the name of Jesus. I will not fear what the enemy can do. I'm going to take God's word and the truth and I'm going to fear God. I'm going to go forward in the name of Jesus and my enemy shall not prevail for I am more than a conqueror said the Lord. I stand on the word of God. I'm not a loser. I'm a winner. I'm a victor. And I'm telling you look at the church. When you Gary, I'm afraid that what we've done is sometimes it's pastors, not you, I'm just saying it's pastors. You know what I'm afraid some people have been taught? If you can believe it enough, you can eventually speak it. Yeah. And it's right the opposite. That's right. Faith comes by hearing yes. and hearing by the word of the Lord. Yes. Sometimes when I speak it, I hear it. Sometimes I hear it. Sometimes I speak it before I hear it. And I heard it before I believe it. But there's a time where you begin to declare God's goodness in your life. Sometimes we listen. We just uh, we get around the break. We just get around drinking coke in the morning. And we just start calling about how God is blessed. Yes. Come on. About five or ten minutes into it, it hits us. <laughs> but it's true. We're going to be all right. Can somebody say everything? Everything. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. God bless you. Listen closely. Come here, Terry. Let's see if Terry can run. Oh, yeah. He's still going. Look at him. Show it off. Always show it off. I don't have a mic for you. Let get you a mic. Everybody bear with me a minute. Let's get him on, brother. Red button? Yeah. Tell us all about that. Can you hear it? Nope. Now, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. A lot of y'all people already know. Uh, I've been wanting to put on a men's conference for a while. And the Lord kind of pushed me to do it. Yeah. So uh, he made a way for it to be. All right. uh, you know, that word this morning was for me. All right. All right. Because I was, I was kind of, you know, Go ahead, say it. I was looking over things and I'm like, man, I've never done this before. <laughs> never done it. I'm going to make a flop of it. It's not going to do no good. Nobody's going to come. <laughs> but that word, that word helped me. God's good. Amen. Help me. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise so, God. You know, we're going through a, a pandemic or whatever, you know. Most people say you don't try to plan something like that here and all this. But I didn't plan it, so I'm just having to go with it. Amen. <laughs> God made it happen. Thursday night, we will have a men's conference here. And uh, guest speaker will be Jason Crabb. And a lot of you know who Jason is. Uh, I'm pretty fired up about it. <laughs> I can't say enough about it because... <laughs> I plan on this being the first annual men's conference. Right. Amen. And you know, most conferences they'll 
they'll start start kind of small, you know, just kind of a no man person come speak. But we got to take some crap. I feel like we're starting off with a bar set high. All right. And we're just going to keep going from there. All right. It's not about the speaker. Or it's not about us. Amen. It's about what God's fixing to do. All right. Praise God. Right. The men's ministry is fixing to get put into gear. All right. All right. And that's a very important thing. Yes. To this so, church. Yes. Great. To this to the church. That's right. But everybody just get ready to see what's going to happen. Get ready. The time is 6 o'clock. We're going to open the doors at 5.30. 6 o'clock. I'm going to try not to keep everybody too long. But like I said, I'm not the one in charge. So whatever the Lord leads to do, that's what we're doing. So, uh, like I say, I'm so excited I just don't say everything. But, uh, every man here, I encourage you to come. Every man. And I'm sorry, ladies, that I can't have But that just opens the door for another service later on that we can have everybody. So, uh, so it's for men only? Men only. I'm sorry. I apologize. No one question I that's, uh, that's what the Lord led me to do is a men's conference. Because I wanted to open it up. But it kept coming to me. Men. Right. Amen. So ladies, I'll see what I can do to get something else. Okay? So 6 o'clock Thursday evening. Uh, I've talked to several guys around already that I'm going to have help. Uh, we are having a men's ministry meeting. Tuesday night, 6.15 here. If you're interested, come out. If you're interested in helping with the conference, come out. Because we're going to discuss all the stuff that we need to do. But I do appreciate y'all listening. And I appreciate everything that the Lord is doing for me. I'd like to dismiss this in prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for everything that you've done and everything that you continue to do for me, for this church. Lord, thank you for this family, family of believers. Lord, just be with us. Be with us throughout our day, with, throughout our life. Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.